Hello and welcome to True Guidance Tarot. I'm Adriana Teodora Dyer. I'm a spiritual medium and intuitive reader. I've got a message for Aquarius today. I've asked my guides and spirits to bring a spirits, spirit to bring whiskey and spirits. I've asked my guides and spirit to bring a message through the cards that will be um, deeply meaningful and helpful for you this week as you navigate what's going on in your world. Uh, clearly, you know what's going on in my world. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, anyway, if you're new to this channel, welcome. I am so glad you're here and I strongly invite you to subscribe so that you can stay in contact with this high vibrational information from the other side every week. <laughs> I try my best to stay out of the way, but... <laughs> Uh, anyway, if you're returning, so glad to see you, and um, I really enjoy sharing this information with you, and thank you so much for sharing your time. I do really love to do these readings for you, and let's get started, Aquarius. So the energy of the universe that the universe is sending you this week, we've got the lovely Knight of Cups. So this is an invitation to re- join, renew your commitment, your vow to your spiritual journey, to your spiritual quest. And for some of you, this can just be a giving yourself a subtle reminder. Yep, I need to keep listening to my intuition this week. For others of you, this is looking for more connections, more synchronicities in your world around you, whatever spirituality or connect connection to the higher power means to you. That's what's being asked of you this week. And this is a really joyful kind of rushing energy that I'm feeling that this is a, it's like a, sometimes when you're maybe distracted from the spiritual path for a while and you come back, there's like all of this, like welcoming you back kind of energy with all sorts of stuff, all sorts of synchronicities, all sorts of things working out just in your favor. That's kind of the energy that's going on this week. So a lot of, like I said, really favorable energy. Now, you don't necessarily have your sights on that. You've got your sights on this two of cups. So your, your focus right now is relationships and it's like the relationships right in front of you. So these are more emotional relationships, not talking so much about colleague or worker that kind of more distant these are closer relationships that we're talking about and so remember that the universe is presenting you with this higher higher octave higher octane the knight of cups the knight of cups is also someone who quests after relationships but more than relationships he quests after that spiritual connection so sometimes when the knight of cups comes up for a reading that I'm doing for someone and that if that's representing the person, we're looking at someone who is a spiritual person who is deeply connected to their intuition, who is also possibly very artistic, good with words. So anyway, getting off the subject, that's the energy that the universe wants you to focus on, but you're kind of looking at what's right in front of you, these relationships. And there's a tendency to want to compromise in these relationships. I can't tell you which cards are telling me that. This is just the energy that's coming through. But there's definitely the, the spirit, the energy of compromise. And of compromising yourself. Not just comp like both sides making a compromise. This is you compromising yourself. So let's continue this story. We've got the Ten of Cups into the Seven of Pentacles and then the Justice on the other side. So the short answer is that you're being asked to look at these relationships a bit more objectively, but through the heart and the intuition, not the heart that's attachment, that's actually emotional and mental, but the heart and intuition. So let me break it down a little bit. Ten of Cups is the extension of this Two of Cups, and so these two are relating to each other. The Ten of Cups represents more, again, that closeness, familial relationships. But the thing with the word familial is that it can mean birth family or it can mean other family, chosen family. So intimate relationships, friends, romantic partners. But they're saying that this family relationship is where this compromise, where this not always being true to yourself started to happen. And you're seeing that a little bit. Seven of Pentacles is kind of looking at things going, hmm, hmm, 
family members, do I pull them some slack just because they're family members? Would I treat someone else this way? Would I take this kind of treatment from someone else who wasn't related to me? And the justice is asking you to seek the fairness. So asking yourself that question, is that fair to take treatment from your family that you wouldn't stand for with other people? Is it okay to, um, to accept it from your family member just because they're your family member? Because the thing is, even though you may stand up to someone else who's not in your family, the relationships that are closer into you are still going to have those um, hallmarks, those like markings. I want to say like, you know, how animals have markings, like zebras have certain stripes. They're going to have that same flavor because all of those, your close relationships stem out of your close relationships. So your close friendships, your partnerships, those dynamics all stem out of the dynamics and the relationships that occur between you and your family members. So what the universe is trying to get you to do is, again, remember this. Remember your connection to your intuition. Remember your connection to your ideals. This is interesting. What are the ideals of the relationships that you seek? And do all of your relationships show this, Fam family and otherwise? Thing is, family members don't necessarily get the hook, just be, get off the hook because they're family members. That's something that we tell ourselves so that we can continue to belong to a family, which, you know, of course, we are tribal animals. We survive better in, in a social group than we do in an individual setting. But the thing is, is that when you are compromising yourself in any relationship, you're weakening your own relationship with yourself. This can't find its true ideal relationship with itself or with anyone else if you're accepting compromise in any relationship. So this is asking you to look very fairly, very objectively at what's going on really in these relationship dynamics. Is someone being fair with you? Is there equal give and take? And if not, you need to take some steps to make this happen for you whether this is putting down a boundary, whether this is verbalizing, whether this is bringing to the, um, this imbalance to the person's awareness, you need to take some action that direction. But understand that you're not doing it to fix the relationship, you're doing it to make things right with yourself. Do you see how he's riding a unicorn? Maybe you can't see the horn. But we're talking about purity of intent, purity of relationship, and, um, purity of connection with the self. So you're trying, you're working on this relationship externally, but you're trying to make it right with yourself. What you're really saying is, I don't want to compromise anymore. Therefore, this is how I'm going to express that to the outside world. The relationship may or may not be fixed depending on where that person is. If the other person is also willing to look at themselves and to shift, so that actually they're being more true to themselves, then the relationship will be fine. If they're not willing to reflect or they're not at that space, then that's exactly what you need to do is give them some space because this is about making it right with you. So <laughs> if you've got questions about that, please reach out in the comments. And um, I always love to hear from you and want to let you know that if you're ever looking for some one-on-one -on -one reading or support from the other side, I'm more than happy to work with you. My website, trueguidancetarot.com, can give you more information about one-on-one -on -one readings through Zoom, or you can email me in the, from the email below to learn more. So look forward to seeing you next time, and have a great week.